How's it going? Um, this is Peter at the Shalom Piece, and I'm going to do some research and development. So I don't know what I'm going to make um, with these remaining butternut squash pieces I have from my last dish. But like I always say on these videos, we waste not, want not, especially in a time like this. But I noticed that these pieces of butternut squash have these really nice architectural looks to them, you know? I mean, look at that. Why would I waste that form if I can take advantage of it? Right? So here we go. I'm going to make these like that. And then I thought, oh, I can make it as a bowl. I could use this as a bowl for like, I don't know, I could fill it with like a mushroom filling or something. I don't know yet. But then I thought, why don't I just go down this? Oops. I wanted to make a ring actually. So there we go. I can make these. Maybe there's like a circle now out of this. And maybe do something like that on a plate where I have a bunch of rings. Let's see. Maybe I can set it up like this. Do a few more. They can't be too thin because they'll just won't they won't cook right. Here's another one, right? So then I got a pay, I got this architectural stuff going on on this plate. That's what I was thinking. What do you think? So now I can fill these with different, you know, things on a plate. Can you see that? We'll show you a, plate, a picture in a little bit. But anyway, just prepping. I'm doing some prepping. I'm, just, I'm thinking. You know, what do you do with these pieces? Can you use them in a natural state? You know, like that. So I'm going to find some ways to use these. I'll probably bake those on a sheet and display them something like that, you know, where we have all three of the butternuts like that. Okay, then I'm gonna get, I'm not gonna waste all my time in that, but I also decided that from this big thick neck piece of the butternut squash, I can get, probably get some big, like plates. This is like a plate now. So then I would do another platter that had some squares on it, like this. Okay, hope you're catching all this. So now I got this thing going. Might need to use a smaller one, that's all right. Anyway, these are about, I don't know, a quarter inch, half inch thick. And I would do like that. So now I got three, I got two different presentations happening with the same uh, squash. So I got the square ones, and the round ones, okay? So this is all like presentation stuff. You wanna find ways, new unique ways to display fruits, vegetables, proteins, meats, you know? This is part of it. I'm gonna uh, cut out for a second and then I'll be back to show you a sour cream, a butternut sour cream that I decided to do also, so. Uh, like I said, I had an, ing uh, an extra ingredient problems. I had more materials than I needed last night for last night's video in the butternut squash. So today I'm at the house and I'm trying to think about ways to prepare it. She my buddy, a chef, um, I share a house, house here with him. Uh, he said, well, you know, why don't you take one of your ingredients and make, you know, the same ingredient, but make it three different ways. And I was like, okay. And actually, I ended up making it four different ways because he suggested, like, you know, like, do a dice and do it. And I was like, yeah, let's do a dice. So I'm going to do this dice. And this is going to be like a finish on top of the, uh, the dish. But I'm going to butter fry it with pepitas and a little bit of cranberry because I have that material and butter and a little brown sugar. So that's going to be a nice caramelized butternut squash dice. Then, of course, I barbecued. Um, put some grill marks on what I like to call slate, uh, butternut squash uh, slates, uh, or, you know, uh, tiles. And this would be like a little dish, probably, for like, you know, maybe something else. I think I'm going to put the barbecue chicken on it. I just barbecued some chicken. And this I'm going to bake, and I'm going to put something in the center of it, I think. You know, I don't know what yet. Maybe this sour cream that I'm making. I just meant, and then let me make some of this for you. So what I did was I boiled down some chunks of um, butternut squash and made this 
beautiful looking. The color is probably most like, you know, like a um, like an orange creamsicle kind of uh, color. And, and I don't know if you guys can tell in the light here how natural it is, but anyway, it's a nice, nice, beautiful color to it. We need to put some more flavor in it, though. I think I should do some of these barbecued onions that I did with the um, barbecue chicken I made. So that'll give it some, some boom, some booyah, right? So now we have four different ways, four different ways to prepare butternut squash. We'll be right back with some more creations in a minute. Shalom. Okay, um, here we are. Today it has been school day and challenged to learn um, by chef uh, telling me to use a single product and, and make it prepared several different ways. So I did. Um, I prepared four different ways of butternut squash. Uh, one is baked. We have a platter here that I'm gonna do something with. I don't know how I'm gonna even plate it yet. I think I have some materials that will work. Then we have the grilled. So that was baked. This is grilled butternut squash. I didn't remember the slates I cut out. This is butternut squash, butter fried butternut squash. You can't pour it out because it's, it's like got a uh, butter um, brown sugar with some clear port, white port, to uh, reduce it a little bit. I probably could have gone a little more dry on that, you know, without so much butter, but hey man, remember everything with butter tastes great. So anyway, so one, two, three, and then the fourth way to prepare it was a sour cream, uh, butternut sour cream, and I put some barbecued onions in that. I don't know if you, I think I did a little video of that too for this. Where do we start? Um, let's do the meat last because you don't want to mix that with what I believe is over here is going to be, you know, rabbinically kosher. No, uh, no dairy or meat on this product over here. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring the camera in so you can see me plate. All right. Okay. First thing we're going to do is um, I'm going to put dollops of the butternut uh, sour cream into these little what I did envision so this is going to be kind of a vegetarian dish i could plate this you know what i should do is plate this each plate but that's okay you guys will get an idea of what i'm doing here in just a second i could make this on a single plate actually which is probably what i should do but that's okay i was really trying to find a platter for this but i see now that this material lend itself better to single plate portions so I'm gonna have to do this stuff to it. I mean, you can still serve it, you know, like French style, table side, or something like that, if you have good servers, like me, in my team. Um, otherwise, definitely some malfunctions could happen with this. <laughs> so, anyway, here we go. So we got the sour cream in there. Too late now, can't go back. Uh, I would do this just to clean up real quick here you can do that when you have gloves and you haven't been touching everything you're fresh all right all right so we're gonna do that there is that I'm gonna want to do some garnishes to it uh, let's do a little lemon I think that'll bring it up a little bit. A little lemon. Um, let's do some, I think we need some other color. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I had done something earlier. I found out that a pear is the same shape as the butternut squash. So I made some of the same type of shapes that I had made earlier. And now I'm going to do this. Oh wait, I'll go this way. Keep everything symmetrical. See how it was flat on one side, flat on one side. Oh wait, that means go this way. <laughs> okay. Hopefully I didn't put too much on there and then everything will just fall off. But now we have another cup 
paired up, man. We got pair on this. Oh, I could have I could have made one more pair slice. That's okay. I think you guys got the idea. Oh, lucked out on that one. Good job, Petey. And then I think we need some green in there. Okay, just a little little refreshing little green. Okay, what if we did this on a plate? You know, singular plate, right? Then we got something that has color combinations on it. It's got um, texture combinations. The celery is fresh, crunch, crunch. And the pear is ripe. So it's gonna be, you know, that smoothie. And then the baked um, butternut squash. Okay, I think that's that. We got a lemon on that. We did this. This is done. That's a dairy product over there. We're gonna, we're gonna separate that. Get the citrus in between us. Now, we're going in. Because what do we have here now? We have um, the slate prepared butternut squash. I'm gonna do um, grilled onions on these. Let's go ahead. You know, you just gotta go for it sometimes. Pow. Just let it lay down. Lay it down, baby. Let it go, let it go. Go yard, go yard. I'm going yard on this. So let's just go ahead and do it, man. And then, you know, you could, again, you could serve this as you wish. All right, so there's gonna be some green, uh, there's, excuse me, there's some olives there. I mean, excuse me, um, onions there. I'm gonna do some chicken. Lay that out, one, two, three. Let's do it again. In fact, you know what, let's just, I'm not messing around with this. I'm gonna lay, I'm gonna lay it down like this. I'm gonna lay down the law. Pow. You know what? Sometimes you gotta just go all the way. Okay? Uh, let's do some more onions on there. Cause I love grilled onion. And we actually haven't done any dairy on that either, have we? Oh no, I'm gonna do a little uh, dairy because we have a little dairy in the uh, nuts. You can do this with just olive oil. You know, you don't have to use butter, but um, boy, do I love butter. And I'm gonna get some of these sweet pepitas and butternut squash dice on there. And boy, do I wanna call chef right now and say, take a look at this. Hey, chef! I wonder where he is. Yeah. He's uh, recovering. He just uh, had a major procedure. That will make him feel better. Okay. Well, folks, we have two dishes. One extremely... Now, listen to me. The kosher thing about, um, about dairy and meat goes like this. Let me just clarify it for you for people who don't like extra rules. Basically, dairy, let me, let me pull you up to me. Dairy, uh, com, dairy and meat um, prohibition in, in kosher cooking comes from a passage that says you shall not boil a kid in its mother's milk. It says it just like that in Torah. It's not, it doesn't get elaborate. So, the rule is, to me, if, if an animal doesn't nurse, how can it possibly be cooked, seethed in its mother's milk? It can't. And um, in all the dietary laws, it always names out these animals very specifically. Why wouldn't it name out, you know, a type of animal? The Torah is very calculated. It doesn't make mistakes. So, in my opinion, uh, you wouldn't uh, can include an animal like a chicken that doesn't nurse in the dietary law of no meat and dairy. However, just to make you guys happy, I got you covered on the on my left over here. Here it is. We'll do some close-ups in just a second. All right.